Thank you for outlining a few uh, areas um, on which this kind of collaboration uh, would be useful. Um, let's now go dig into some of the concrete examples uh, that we have here, and we'll start with uh, Costa Rica, Mr. Uh, Castillo. Um, so you have been participating in these knowledge exchanges, and, um, and so they have had an impact on, on your work. So can you give us a little bit of an introduction to the case of Costa Rica? What should we know about it? And then how knowledge exchanges helped you uh, take some decisions? Eh, buenos dias. Eh. Good morning, Costa Rica. Well, I'm going to mention a few ideas to put in context the Costa Rican model. Costa Rica has a system, it's a public uh, health system, which uh, cares for 90% of the population, 10% is um, uh, cared for by private services. And how the system is financed in Costa Rica? The system is financed through taxes which are given by three parts, the, the, the government, the workers, and the employers. That is to say that according to the last census in Costa Rica, 86% of the population is insured. And also through an insurance that the government has, all the poor people who cannot pay for insurance is, are insured by the state. Well, this is a coverage of almost 90 percent. Another important aspect is that in our country, the right to health is a fundamental concept or right it is a different from the European concept where the right to health is considered an element of the of the policies and the social and economic um, scope. Or it, and it depends on what the law says. In Costa Rica, this does not exist. It, the right to health is a fundamental right, and therefore there is a mechanism which is the safeguard, uh, safe, safe, haver, safe harbor principle where anyone can request uh, coverage through a resource that takes less than a month and where the constitutional court has an agenda. Now then, what has happened in Costa Rica? What has happened is that, that the right to health is an equal right. It's autonomous to the people. It is a universal right. It is a right where I as has been mentioned, it's a right that cannot uh, give any, there's no budgetary reasons not to give service. This is something that has to be established. Now, how far have we gone in the, in the courts, the constitutional courts? What it sees the most are the problems of waiting lists. We have a problem there because, especially if people want to see specialists or for surgery, and the people who, at a given time, feels that their needs are not being satisfied, they go to the courts and they give them safe harbor. As far as the waiting lists, the court has different um, opinions because they also have a health concept of 1946 where the World Health Organization had uh, said that it was um, an emotional, physical, etc. health, and as you all know. And another issue that was frequent, although in the last few years it has lessened, is the, that of medical prescriptions. Costa Rica uh, priority is given to what the treating doctor says, that the Social Security, there's a committee uh, for pharmaceutical products, and they're the ones that have to give their okay. Those medicines that are not in the official list, if there's a discrepancy between the treating doctor or who the one who prescribes and the uh, pharmaceutical committee, of the Social Security, the priority is given to the user of the service if the treating doctor prescribes something, although the 
committee says that this medicine should not be given to him because there is no scientific evidence that supports this. Also, the, um, they have had a problem with, with supply of medicines. The Social Security has an acquisition um, method now, and we've also been involved in the issue of implementing programs and also a massive vaccination campaigns which have been harbored. As far as uh, uh, the policies, for, and I've been trying to uh, say something to you, and I hope I, I, I can transmit this. The, judiliz the legalization of policies, so it's, it's not that the, these will go to courts, because that's what the courts are there for. They're, they're there to solve legal issues. But, but it, instead, this is when the decisions that the actors in health, the Social Security or the Ministry of Health, go to the constitutional courts. This has not happened in our country. At least this is the idea that I have. As far as the financial impact for us on our decisions, the, the economic impact in our country, according to studies, have been very few. For instance, 2009, or rather 2010, the purchasing budget for the Social Security was $161 million. And the, they safeguarded about 100 of these safe harbors for medication for cancer. We have the second cause of death in our country is cancer. And the cost of the decisions of the courts was $334,000. It's not even 1% or an eight of an 8%, which is the budget for medicines for the Social Security. And with regard to the budget, it's it's very small amount. And also, another important aspect is that of prioritizing health. The courts have not uh, fixed uh, priorities in health. That is, they've made decisions. For instance, the building of a hospital, a special hospital for psychiatric patients who and who are imprisoned. But this has not had much impact from the, and also the cases of AIDS, etc. But my main idea is that the users of the services, what they do is they go to the courts because there is a symptom. Something is not working in the system. I will finish by mentioning the dialogue that we have had before 2010, 2011, we began to study this in Costa Rica. Humanos, eh, la caja y, y la sala constitucional ni siquiera se hablaban, ¿verdad? Éramos como dos eh, adversarios, ¿verdad? Eh, peleando en un ring permanentemente, ¿verdad? Hoy en día, a raíz de esto, de este año y año y dos meses que llevamos dialogando. Eh, hemos entendido que somos actores estratégicos en la búsqueda de un problema común, que es, en primer lugar, garantizar la sostenibilidad del sistema de salud, y en segundo lugar, eh, atender razonablemente y prioritariamente los servicios de la caja. Entonces, este diálogo que empezamos ahora ya y lo institucionalizamos la semana primera de este mes en San José, Costa Rica, ha llevado a crear una conciencia colectiva entre los actores sociales, eh, judiciales, eh, políticos, administrativos, tendentes a que tenemos que poner cada uno de nosotros un grano de arena en la solución conjunta de los problemas. Otro aspecto, y tercer aspecto que me parece muy importante, es que ha calado, por lo menos en algunos jueces, no en todos los jueces, por lo menos en dos o tres jueces, ha calado 
de que este tema tenemos que estarlo monitoreando todos los días y tenemos que estarlo eh, eh, viendo con sumo cuidado. Por una cuestión muy sencilla, la idea básica es garantizar, como bien decía un, una de las preguntas que nos eh, instaban, garantizar la sostenibilidad del sistema de salud. Ahora, ¿quién prioriza? A mí me parece que la priorización del sistema de salud es una decisión política, no es una decisión judicial. Eh, ¿Cómo se utilizan los recursos? También es una decisión política, no es una decisión judicial. Los jueces lo que tenemos que tener es el sumo cuidado de no sustituir a los actores que tienen mayores conocimientos, mayor legitimidad social e incluso mayor legitimidad democrática. Muchas gracias. Thank you very much. So this was a, a very interesting introduction into the Costa Rica case. What I found fascinating is how you said that this dialogue, this ongoing dialogue, um, made different parties realize that um, you're not adversaries, in, but actually you are um, part of, you're just two actors in a society that, are, that is in search for a common solution to a problem that you're facing. And that has happened through the knowledge exchange and the dialogue. I, if that's okay, I would like to stay with Costa Rica for a moment and give the floor to Alvaro Salas, um, who can maybe ex uh, explain a little further how knowledge exchange also with other countries um, has really helped uh, address problems in Costa Rica.